Hello, welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. Well, the city of Anaheim is not just Mickey Mouse, it is also doctors and dentists and musicians as they flock to the NAM convention at the expanded convention center in the city of Anaheim. With us now is Anaheim City Councilwoman Lucille Kring to uh, talk more about the mm -hmm. expansion at the convention center and what it means to the city. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for asking me here, Leslie. It's always good to see you. Well, there was a thought, you know, if you build it, will they come and experience yes. at least from the get-go mm -hmm. saying it's working out so far? It's working out great. We had our last physical expansion in the early 2000s, and at that time I said we need to start thinking about our next expansion because we are the largest convention center west of Vegas, and you have San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego nipping at your heels, but we're still the largest. And we have our two major conventions, National Association of Music Merchants, which comes in January, and Natural Products, which comes in March. Both of them a number of years ago said, we're leaving and you can't replace those types of conventions unless you expand. So expand we are doing. We, we broke ground a year ago and the convention center with 200,000 more feet of meeting space will open this September. And it's going to be great. So they both have given us letters of intent for the next six years. They'll definitely be here in 18. And they, they are going to be here, I predict, for many, many more years to come. So you have the big music convention. What are some of the other organizations that are attracted now to the convention center? Well, our biggest one that's coming in November is the American Heart Association. And that is a huge convention. We'll have 18,000 people here. That on the surface doesn't look like a lot of people, but it's a very high-end convention because we'll have the doctors staying at our, our most precious hotels, the Four Diamonds, hopefully some of them. Some of them won't be built this year, but they will come back next year and it will be built. But they ha and we have not had the Heart Association since the early 2000s because they specifically said, we love Anaheim, but you do not have enough meeting rooms because they have to constantly take credits to continue their knowledge of the particular profession. And they said, we can't come. And so we're doing this for them and for other conventions. So they're going to be here, they're going to be happy, they're going to learn all they need to know about cardiac problems for their patients. Mm -hmm. So it's important to stay current with the Absolutely. kinds of facilities that mm -hmm. people want. Describe these facilities, how has it changed? Well, as the right now it hasn't changed, but we took out a parking structure and the parking mm -hmm. structure was old, it was aging, and that's, we don't have room. You can go up, but you can't go out. So we took out a parking structure. So when the, the expansion is finished in September, I hope you come to the grand opening, it'll be fun. We're gonna do 100,000 feet uh, on the, like the first level, and that will be for meeting spaces. The second level will be parking, because we have to bring back the parking that we took out. And then the third layer, will be another 100,000 square feet of meeting space. But you can, it's, it's very flexible space because you can partition it, that you can have classrooms or you can have exhibit areas. It's very flexible. But in January, when we had the National Association of Music Merchants, last year we had 100,000 people. This year we have 106,000 people. And so they used every bit of the convention center. But more importantly, natural products was 77,000 visitors last year and over 80,000 this year. They had 3,100 vendors. They had every space and every hotel had vendors in it. They used the Marriott ballroom, which they've never used. They used the parking garage of the Sheridan for food trucks and vendors, which they've never used. They used the plaza for vendors, which they've never used. So everybody wants fresh, farm to fresh. Everybody wants sustainability and this is the place to find it. And the, the revenue <clears throat> mushrooms out from the hotels, oh. uh, from the convention center into restaurants and mm -hmm. other things that we don't even think of. Where does other additional revenue come from when people are staying at the convention center? Well, when they come with their big conventions, they're staying in our hotels and they're paying whatever the room rate is, but they're also paying the, the bed tax, the transit occupancy tax. And to date, because Sacramento hasn't found this out yet, but the city gets to keep 100% of the bed tax. And plus we have the sales tax that they buy something, if they go to restaurants, we get the benefit of the sales tax. It's been said by many busboys, waiters, waitresses, and a couple of years ago by taxi cab drivers that they make all of their money for the whole year at the two conventions, January and March, because the other conventions, although they're big, they don't meet the oomph that the other two conventions come in the winter time. 
So, so it used to be taxi good. drivers, and now it's Uber drivers. Right. I just <laughs> <laughs> that, I haven't talked to them yet, but it used to be the taxi drivers would be so successful during those two conventions, they could almost take off the rest of the year. There was some concern moving into this. Was it a wise thing to take out money and the bonds to pay for this? I think it was fabulous. All we did was we had bonds on the convention soon, and all we did was refinance those bonds at a lower rate so we can pay them off a lot quicker. And we're getting this beautiful convention center, which is going to be nothing but new conventions coming in. We have Best Buy coming in October 1st, convention center expansion September, and then we have the Heart Association in November. But we do have fill-ins. We have the garden and, and flower show every year, garden and home show. We have the dental association that comes here every year. And so they're feeders, and we have the, the Catholic convention every year, but they're not overnights. So we want them to be here because you still get some benefit from sales tax, but the other ones are the meat and potatoes of the city. What are you looking at in the future? Any uh, areas that you're going to solicit? Because I know there's a real competition between Florida and uh, mm -hmm. New York, other places that try to uh, get this convention business. Well, we're always trying to get other businesses. There's some businesses we will never get, like the electronics convention in Vegas. We just are simply not big enough. But the Visit Anaheim, which used to be the convention center, they, they have an office in Washington and they have an office in Chicago. And they have sales teams that go overseas to try to solicit the people. And they always are talking to meeting planners because the meeting planners, if they're good, they're the ones that set up all these different conventions. So you want to make sure you're very close to them so they will bring their big conventions here. There's a lot of conventions out there, and I don't begrudge some of them going to Long Beach, some of them going to Huntington Beach because they're smaller conventions, but we want the biggies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anaheim is changing more with the downtown, the, the entertainment area, mm -hmm. uh, better restaurants and hotels right. and planning for the future. Right. We have four, four Diamond Hotels on the books that will be opening shortly, and we just had the rededication of the Garden Walk a couple of weeks ago, so instead of being a restaurant retail, it's now going to be more entertainment and retail. The House of Blues just opened there a couple of weeks ago. You've got a, a restaurant that's called the Grasslands Meat Market. So there's a lot of new energy coming into that. Yeah, it seems like there's more of an expectation to have <coughs> a one-stop uh, shopping or an entertainment mm -hmm. complex like you'd have in Orlando and some of the other right. destination resorts. Mm -hmm. so Anaheim was a little suburb and our <laughs> Orange LA. County kind of, <laughs> you know, sprawled out from there. It was right. more difficult for a tourist mm -hmm. who's visiting the convention center or Disneyland to have other entertainment. Mm -hmm. I know that you're very interested in um, uh, the environment, and yes. there's a, a point that you would like to get across uh, from a, a recent boating excursion. Is this <laughs> what, where this came well, from? Well, I really would because this, you can see, this held four bottles of soda. It can be four cans of soda, it can, I mean six. It can be six cans of soda, beer, whatever. But a lot of people just pull this off and then throw it in the trash. Well, the animals, and especially the seagulls, put their head in here and they can't get out, so they choked, they, they cannot get food, so they die. So I would encourage everybody, all you have to do, it'll still go into the land mass, just cut it. It's very easy to cut it, so you're not doing anything to the environment. And even if this does go out to sea, you've done a, such a good job that no seagull is going to be able to get caught in this. They don't get caught here, they get caught here. And then also the mylar balloons. You really need to think about when your party is over, make sure they don't go up in the atmosphere and just float away. Puncture them so they won't go, there's no air in them, there's no helium. They can go in the landfill and the animals think it's food and they eat it and they die. Well, thank you very much for You're being very welcome. here. And thank you for joining us as well. I'm Leslie Lake.